I think I'm just gonna call it the paint project. The paint project. Da -da -da. Hello everyone, welcome back. I am Brittany, if you are new, and happy new year. I got a late start to making videos for the new year. This is my first one since the holiday season, but I just want to wish you a happy new year. So many new beginnings ahead, hopefully for all of us, and I'm just wishing you so much love and health and happiness and all the things. So not too, too much has changed. We are starting to get in the swing of wedding planning. There are so many things I want to share with you about that, but I want to know if you are interested. So definitely let me know in the comments. I am still in person with school. I would say the majority of my students are in person now, but we do still have some on Zoom. So I'm doing both at the same time. I am planning for people on Zoom, people in class, and it's it's not typical like, oh, group one can go sit at this table, group two over here. Everything has changed, so I really have to adapt with that. One of my most requested videos has been to do a plan with me, so that is what we are going to do today. Got my glasses right here, got my laptop ready to go. I'm going to take you through like the whole moment from printing out the calendar which i got some for 2021 which i will link for you they're free they're printables they're fantastic to my thought process and everything else in between i am working with Warby Parker on this video my favorite glasses company ever i think i have one two three I have three, three Warby Parker glasses of my own. So these are my regular ones. My blue white ones are of course in my classroom. I left them there, but I bring them all the time because I'm constantly looking at the computer. And then I have these round ones that I'm obsessed with. Those are by my nightstand because I wear those at night when I am watching TV. So I just got my order in and I would like to order my fourth pair. So I got some that I want to try on for you and then we'll get planning. I remember when I was younger, Warby at first hit South Florida. Florida and it was in Miami which is a little bit of a drive for us and Rob came with me and it was just so much fun I actually went in store and tried them on I got my first pair which are these I think they're called Baker um, so these are my little babies I'll never get rid of these it's just like I feel like those glasses define me they were with me for so long in my life now there's a Warby even closer to me and on top of that they have the online program where you can just order them online and you can try them on at home which I actually love especially right now during COVID when you don't want to go out and go into the store. My sister and I did go into a store. They clean each one. She needed a new pair of glasses. Having them at home isn't bad at all. They come in this really nice tray and then you just put it in the box and mail it back. It's so, so simple. I ordered five pairs to try on and I'm going to show you three of them. They also do sunglasses, contact lenses, eye exams, and they're here to serve us online and in person. So it's a win-win situation. All right, let's try on the first one. They might be, are they a little too big? Like, let's try on this one and compare. I remember how excited I was when I got these. And also the thing with Warby, oh, see like the way this one fits is just right. This might be a little bit too big, but I love the color. I, I would like a pair that's a little bit darker. This one, it's kind of hard to tell from the camera, but this one's a little bit lighter than this one. And I love this color, but glasses can be really expensive. And with Warby, they start at $95. They'll include the lenses. You have the option to add on sunglasses or blue light, which I've done with the ones in my classroom. So it makes it affordable. These I actually have. I don't have them in this color. Mine are more of a gold. These are the Simon. I already know the name, but I love this color. Mm -mm 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 -mm. I think these are my favorite and they're blue. I've never had a blue pair of glasses. Do I look like a teacher? I am here to teach you grammar. The quality of these are really just so fantastic. It's like my favorite thing about Warby. It's like you just know you're getting good glasses. I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring these into my class and I'm going to show my students and see what they think. I'll, I'll show them like my top two. That's like my favorite part about this at home thing. It's like if your friends or family can't go to the store with you, you don't want to go in and take pictures and send it to them and wait, just show them. The most in style. Got it. Oh, the blue? These are your favorite? I like those. Those are my favorite. 
So that's what I think I'm going with. Let me know what your favorite is, and I am going to put a link here. It's warbyparker.com slash five foot one. You can try on five glasses, sunglasses, both free, and then all I have to do is just put it back in the box it came with and stick it in my mailbox. The label's already on it. It just makes it so simple and so easy. And at the end, you get a new pair of glasses if you decide you like it. And if you don't, no pressure, but like, <laughs> you're gonna like it. So you can click the link in the description and it will take you right there. I'm blue. Ooh, ooh. So what I would do is I would go online and I would just select the ones that I want. And then they already have my prescription on file but you just upload it and then they send it right back to you. It's really just fantastic. I also wanna give you guys some wedding updates. We are really making progress. My favorite part about this whole process, you think I'm gonna say dress shopping? No, I'm just kidding. That's coming up soon too. But um, we are going to taste food in like February. I'm so excited, I'm going to vlog it if you are interested. I mean like, I think you'll be interested but I'm gonna try the food, the appetizers. We get to try seven appetizers, I'm just like, they have latkes. I'm I'm just so excited. All right, I'm putting this back in here, and then the label is already on the outside. So hold on. The first thing we are going to do is we are going to print out the calendars for planning. I'm going to link the calendars here. I did it for 2020. Seemed to be a hit. I did not create these. Um, and it's not one particular person who creates them. I just like find whichever one. But you guys seem to like it. God, the computer hears me now. I see a video of someone getting engaged. Me, myself, got nothing to lose. All right, we are in January, but let's let's do this for February. All right, I'm printing it out right now. I'll be right back. I'm linking this for you. Grab yours. Let's do it together. So the very first thing that I did for this semester, and I've never done this before. I always just start with the calendar, and this is what the calendar looks like. Normally I just go right into the calendar, but this semester I am teaching all three grade levels and it's overwhelming <laughs> to say the least. So what I do is I make an overview and I teach writing. I teach writing to 6th, 7th, and 8th grade. So I'm teaching 7th grade for the first time. I've already done 8th grade, I've already done 6th grade, and each quarter when I get a new group of kids I just repeat. And then I modify depending on, you know, the kids if they need me to slow down or speed up or add an assignment here or there. But at least I have the basics. With seventh grade I had to really start all over um, and plan this from the ground up so something that seventh grade does at our school is narrative writing and descriptive writing and when I really think of descriptive and narrative writing the first thing I think of is our senses it is acknowledging all of the senses that are around us and embracing what we can when it comes to the senses because when we read books it's almost like you can smell something and see something and hear something and what are all those senses and how do they contribute to the overall story so that is something really important that I think they need to master along the way and I got these students in January the beginning of January we did a welcome expectations get to know you you know throughout the course we take notes so if they need to learn sentence structure we have to do notes I love to create really fun PowerPoints. I give them guided notes. We talk about it. We do activities paired with it after. I try to get them interacting as much as I can, whether it's through a breakout room or for, from a distance. So before the students do this lesson that I am planning, by then they've already learned what descriptive writing is. They've learned what narrative writing is. They've had some writing practice. They've hopefully mastered sentence structure. They are almost there. I really do think they are ready for this. And I was really inspired actually from the Tumblr days. You know those you know paint strips like when you go to Home Depot or Lowe's I need to go and see who's going to be generous enough to give me a bunch of them so we'll see I was really inspired by those tumblr pictures where you would see the paint strip and then you would see quotes or poems on them and I'm like you know what when I think about senses or aesthetics or smells, I think about colors. So I associate the beach with blues and maybe some light greens and tans. I associate the mountains sometimes with like grays and that like rocky color sometimes, the, the red, um, like the red mountains or the blue mountains. So you really could tell a story just based on a set of colors. I know that I want the final project to involve 
a paint strip. So it's like, how do you take this weird idea and plan for it while also helping the students master something, while also getting them closer to writing in a descriptive way or using narrative writing? Step one, I have my calendar. So my students have a little break in February, so I am just going to do this after we get back from the break. So I start seeing them again on the 16th. And I know it's going to be a hard weekend before that for me, just with the commemoration of the tragedy and whatnot. So having this plan now is really just going to help me concentrate on my mental health that weekend and then I can come in and I know what I have to do. So sometimes I know it's tough to plan ahead this year with COVID. Some of us are just taking things day by day and that is okay. Um, but if you can plan here and there, just know that it's probably going to help you and your mental health um, as much as you can prepare. Just have like a broad idea of what you are going to do. So we are on block schedule. So let's just assume I'm going to see my students on, yeah, the 15th is President's Day. So let's just assume I'm gonna see them Tuesday and Thursday. So the first thing that we need to do is review what our senses are and I want to show them examples of senses being used and sensory details being used in writing. So I want to show them really good examples of colors being used, smells, review senses. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ooh. Okay, so we're going to review the senses which means I need to create a PowerPoint. Um, I need to create guided notes and I would like a little activity to go with that. So maybe I show them a picture and they have to hit each sense and they have to tell me what they see, what they smell or what they think they could smell. Um, maybe even I bring in an actual item like an onion. Maybe I bring in, <laughs> maybe I bring in a candle, just thinking about things that you could smell obviously just by like holding it up and like taking a whiff in the air sometimes even like with a diffuser they could smell that let me know what they see here and smell hi breeze okay let's plan for the first day to review the senses we'll take guided notes we'll of course have a digital journal before this and then after i'll do a little activity where i either bring in items and show them um on a google slide some pictures maybe we'll like mix it up together and that'll be really fun for them to tell me what they see and smell and taste and and all of that so we'll do that and senses we'll call it a game let me tell you guys something even though this is an activity or a lesson you tell the students this is a game and they're like that's what I learned about middle school you're like I have a game for you I I did a baking challenge with them but really they were writing in a descriptive way about food but when you tell them it's a challenge they're like where how do I win? What do I win? They don't even care about extra credit. No extra credit. They want candy. They want food, right? Um, okay, so let's do that on the 16th. Now on the 18th, that'll be the next day I see them. I really think they will be ready for the project on the 18th. So what I'm going to do is, and this isn't a project that I want to just happen on one day and be said and done. I think this is going to take a few days. So on the 18th, I think I'm going to introduce the project to them, which is where I put the directions on the screen, I go through everything with them, I answer any questions that they have. I'm also going to do an example where I show them mine. Um, I'll probably do a color that I don't give them. I notice with middle school, if you do an example with a color and then you give them that same color, they're gonna wanna copy you. So <laughs> I'll probably do my own individual color. So we'll introduce that on the 18th and then after that, I will show them the example and then after that, I will assign them their colors. And what I'm gonna have them do is brainstorm. I don't want them to just jump right into this. Um, they are going to be telling a story. I have to, another thing that I realize I have to do is I'll have to put together this project and have the specifics and the rubric. But this is how it all begins. Like a project, a final project, develops by just writing down these ideas and brainstorming and crossing it out and erasing. I also usually never use a pen, but because um, I'm on YouTube right now, I want you guys to be able to see this when I zoom in. I usually use a pencil and then I erase. So 
don't use a pen when you use these calendars. Yeah, so that, that's another thing that I realize I have to do that's going to be on my to-do list. So I will create this project and what I'm thinking right now, just based off of the idea in my head, and I'm, I'm talking out loud right now, this is like very real time, I want them to be given a paint strip and I want them to think about the shades on there and what story it tells. They could do some color matching on Google, maybe look up some inspirational pictures, maybe it takes them back to a childhood memory, maybe it's the same color as a pie that they baked with like their grandma or something like that or maybe it's the same color that they wore on their like bat mitzvah I don't know <laughs> I'm just I'm thinking about so many ideas where this could be about their own life or it could be about something in the real world whatever it reminds them of and I want it to have structure I want it to end up being a story I want it to be in paragraph form I want them to use sentence structure so this is me just like thinking about all the things that I want this assignment to include because I know that it's going to help them get one step closer to narrative or descriptive writing so do you guys see how my my brain works it's weird but I think it all makes sense in the end so on Thursday we'll introduce will show examples show examples and I will assign the colors and they'll start brainstorming we'll just write brain so that means the week after that I'll see them Monday Wednesday and Friday whoops this is why I use pencil you guys so I'll see them Monday Wednesday and Friday I am thinking you know we do have 90 minute class periods I do dedicate the beginning of class to the digital journals and we get talking about that a lot it's just such a nice way to like open up with each other and share and watch different digital media things and relate to it through writing so we do that at the beginning but i'm thinking we'll use that whole week to work on the project and i would say the beginning of march it would be due so what will happen is on the 22nd they will start writing I'm also going to take them outside that day I decided and when I take the students outside I bring my computer and I encourage the people on zoom to go outside if they're allowed to maybe in their backyard but if not I'll just bring my computer outside and I'll show them what do you see what do you feel what do you smell do you see your color what is that feel like or smell like whatever it is I'm also going to encourage them um, over the weekend before that Monday to maybe go touch their item if it's something that they have and really take it in bring in pictures of it whatever that is um so we're gonna go outside we are going to take pictures we're going to seek some inspiration maybe create a mood board for this create an outline so that'll be that first day the second day is really going to be a dedicated writing day and it's going to be a self-editing day. I really am trying to encourage the students in middle school to self-edit their paper as they go. So I want them to write a draft and then go back through it. I'm trying to encourage them to read it out loud as well because sometimes I, I see that there are mistakes that are made. And I realize when I conference with them and I'm like, I want you to read that over to me. They hear the mistake so I always try to encourage them to read it out loud so I think that will be the 24th and then on the 26th that will be a final writing day peer editing and I want them to finish formatting it so the formatting I think will be a conversation that we'll have throughout it um, I would like them to include a picture of what they are actually doing so I give you guys the beach example if I had different shades of blue I think I would put a picture of the beach on it and I would show them how to wrap the text around I want them to come up with a title they can add any colors that they want and then of course I want to add a little element with the paint strip because you know I want to to display those so what I'm thinking is they'll either write the titles of their story on their paint strip and then I can like attach the paint strip with a clothes clothespin and hang them up to display them or maybe they can create their own quote based on the colors and the story that they wrote or if they had to like summarize their story in five words and put on the paint strip what would they do so maybe like a little poetic moment I don't know I have so many ideas but this is where it all begins. It all begins it all begins right here on this paper and it's never neat. It's always messy. It's why I use a pencil, but 
you you have to have fun with these things when you are planning these like weird and creative lessons i think it's okay to be messy and not have all the answers obviously right now i don't um for example on the 22nd i called that a writing and an outside day but if my students don't really understand where to begin we might need to stop and slow down and do an example together so you never really know um but i do anticipate that this will go well so fingers crossed uh, but that's kind of where i'm at right now with the planning process for this project and since I kind of took you through it I'll definitely bring you along in the journey I'm thinking either when I go back to school this week I will start planning this as far as I'm going to need the PowerPoint on senses I need to make guided notes I need to make the actual project guidelines and I need to make an example as well I need to go to the store today to see who will give me those paint strips so I will definitely do that and yeah this week i'll definitely take you along as i make those i use google slides and google docs for everything i think it's just so helpful and it always saves into a folder which is really nice and you can modify it or edit it over the years but that is how i plan i put everything in a binder after when i'm done i'll um organize this i'll probably have to write it again because i did pen like a silly goose just to summarize i start with the overview where i map out the whole semester the big projects that i'm going to do even if i don't know all the details of them just yet then i move on to the calendar from the calendar i figure out what i need to do as far as materials i need to make i create those as i go as well and then i will modify it and then from there it's just editing those materials and taking it to the students and working with them and that is how i plan i think at the end of the day all teachers want to do what is best for their students and do not think that the way i plan is like the number one right way in the world because that's definitely not what it is this is just what works for me and my brain i think i'm a very like confusing complex thinker and people tell me all the time to simplify and slow down and and sometimes i do think really big and i know that there's nothing wrong with that but you know that's just what works for me and i want you to find what works for you and do that so maybe if it's just incorporating these calendars and using that as a layout or using what i do with the charts on the computer to help you get a bigger idea or maybe it's just taking things day by day so do what works for you. I love all of you. I hope this video was helpful. Let me know if you want to see the remainder of this paint project. I think I'm just going to call it the paint project. The paint project. Dun dun dun. Yeah, let me know if you want to see more of it. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, everyone.